Dan Dan Lawson, how Hi. are you, mate? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. So yeah. You've had a good evening so far. You've just come from just come from yoga. Yeah, I've yeah, I was just saying to you, yeah, I've just run back from yoga into the into the bright and wind or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's my least favourable of running conditions. The headwind. Yeah. Um we were just talking about like how I'd done a marathon as well, and uh, I actually that run up and down the the seafront where you've just come from like that, that um, I think that just that got for me very monotonous, and I got like bored of it. But for people who don't know anything about you, you're a, an ultra runner, and yep. is that that's the best way to describe it? ultra marathon runner. Yeah, just an ultra ul- runner. Ultra runner, yeah. Yeah, running. I, I mean, I looked at some of the the distances and the credentials that you've got and honestly we could be here for like half an hour talking about every single one of them um but kind of want to just start with like how the hell did you get into running distances like 400k and 24-hour races and things like that where did it it's a hard question when, okay, <laughs> I don't know. i'll tell you what when, think, when, was, your, when was like your first marathon okay yeah because i that often that answer that differently every time I right think. okay <laughs> it depends on how i'm feeling so when was like your first so, marathon then my first so i ran um i ran quite a quite a lot when i was younger so yeah. from like the ages of like 10 till 12 no i don't know 9 to 12 or something I, w- I was running i actually ran my first half marathon when i was 12 years old um but then i i kind of, i stopped running i just became a normal teenager um and then i started playing football and i played football for years and years and years um but i always had this dream i used to watch the london marathon and you know the the london marathon music i used to i used to love that when i was younger and i had this dream that when i was i used to say to myself when i was 16 because you had to be 16 i think to run the london marathon that i wanted to run and and like complete the London Marathon, but teenage years wow. took over, so that dream kind of uh, it just never happened. Then, like I say, then I started playing football, and then when I stopped playing football, uh, maybe sort of late middle of mid mid thirties or something, yeah. I remembered that dream, and I was like, I oh, really, you know, I've I've never fulfilled it. I've never run a marathon, and um, I kind of had this. I had this friend who I played football with and I used to have this debate with him that you didn't need to train to run a marathon, that we're all, we've all got a basic fitness that we can all go out and oh, just... I'm a big believer of this. Yeah, we yeah. can just run. We're built to run, you yeah. know what I mean? So we can go out and run a marathon. And then one day, I was, to prove him, or to prove myself right, to prove him wrong because he didn't believe it, I went out onto the downs and, yeah, just ran my own person. Yeah, I, did, I didn't join a race or anything i just went out and ran 20 it turned out it was a bit longer maybe it was like 27 28 miles or something yeah because i didn't (laughs) have one of those watches i didn't even know they existed so i just went and ran for a few hours out in the downs and came back and put like a bit of string you know on a map and then measured it out and 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 worked it out and that's where i'm going well, no, afterwards I worked out where I'd gone and then put the string down and then measured it on the ruler and then used the key of the map so i could work out whether oh, right. I'd actually complete, and it turned out it was that, yeah, something like 27, 28 miles. So that was my first marathon. And yeah. you, and like pulling up from it, well, you did you did it like that was. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, super no good. training, proved and it was right. fine. Yeah, <laughs> so. like you proved yourself right. <laughs> so how that that you're sixteen? Uh, wait, how old were you? No, so that, that was that. Uh, no, I was about thirty. That was mid-30s, 30. yeah, right, 35. So that was, that literally, you've gone from the dream of doing the marathon and then we're talking yeah, yeah, 15 big, years later almost. Yeah, big gap. I played football for a while and then I kind of got bored of playing football and that's when wow. I started I started running again, but I used to run on the seafront with a, like dribbling a football because <laughs> I don't, I don't know man. why. <laughs> and yeah, and, and then I went and ran that marathon. And then from there, yeah, I kind I just got, got back into running found found like a love of running again like from when i had when i was when i was younger basically because i first i first heard of you through my brother and we're kind of aptly in his office right now yeah um and he and you both worked at brian of albion football club he was on commercial team and you worked for the uh, community arm albion in the community um and he was telling me stories of he was like, you've got to meet this guy, Dan, who's this runner in, he, he, he runs loads and he runs from, uh, from home to 
to work and that was you've just said to me a minute ago that was your commute like your formal yeah, yeah. F- your, your way of commuting is running mm-hmm. um how far is from like, fr- how far is from your home to the, the stadium oh it's about 10 miles i think so yeah. 10 mi- 20 miles a day yeah like you're doing, and that's i just mean still yeah i still do the same roughly you know around 20 miles a day and most of it's like commuting yeah and actually they they were quite lenient at the at the outfit and those because they <laughs> There's sometimes I'd have a meeting in Worthing and I'd run all the way to Worthing from the from the stadium. <laughs> and, and, and that's even further. There was one time we had a you know, we had like a I think we went to meet we had a meeting at the Houses of Parliament and I ran to I ran up there, yeah, to, from to London. From Brighton basically yeah, yeah. to the Houses of Parliament. Yeah. Mate, that's insane. They so were very kind because it did take uh, it's much quicker to hop in a car. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's amazing like he because yeah he was telling me these stories about um like you coming into work and like you you turn up in work in your, your your running kit or like you'd have nights where you just couldn't sleep so you go out running and you that was your thing like you were just running but you weren't ha, were you with team gb by this time no not at all so this no. was just you doing it yeah and i think at that the love point of running. It, it, it was yeah for the yeah at that point i don't think i'd i hadn't even started racing like um in, in ultra races, yeah, it was more, yeah, it was more like that first time when I went out running on the downs and I, was, I kind of found something, like, so I loved running when I was younger, but the the time when I went back to it and I ran that marathon on the downs, then I, I found that, that stillness it brings you, you know, that, yeah. that calmness it brings you. And I kind of got, I mean, yeah, it is, yeah, it's like an a, addiction. Do you know what I mean? I I really like to have. I find it, I find it hard in a in a day if I haven't had my run and I haven't had that clearness in my mind and that kind of time away from that, that kind of solitary time. And yeah. it's, it's something special happens to your mind when you're running. I don't know. It's really hard to recreate it in any other in any other activity or or it's yeah. just it's it's almost like a fast. Um, a fast way to get to that state of meditation or something that you can just do from from running, and it's 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 kind of that what I was that I run for, and I still run for. Because most people will attribute like the distances that, like if some if you said to most people like ten miles, they're just they're just thinking sheer pain, aren't they? Like they're just. But I I guess the more I've like delved into um, things like breath work and realizing like the rate in which you have to to run like the speed at which you have to run in order to sort of keep it as a um a consistent tempo or like be able to sustain it for a long period is you're not talking like um kipchoge pace like you're not talking about you're you're talking about a lot lesser pace but it's just consistency Mm -hmm. over a long period of time in in ultra races and and especially in training i mean you rarely get out of out of breath basically as opposed to someone who's running a fast marathon or a yeah, like a fast 10k i mean they're they're brutal on your kind of aerobic system you like you get to the end you feel you feel sick you feel you know you, you're dribbling out of your mouth you, you really is a quite a brutal assault on your body but the ultra races no it, it's you it's just uh it's almost just like a a rhythm you just kind of float along yeah and it's uh yeah it's quite pleasant really yeah I, yeah, I think there'll be a lot of people that will try and like di- will be like, I can't believe it. I think you also, I heard you describe it once as um, putting one foot in front of the other, which I think is really nice. Yeah, like, it's, I it's mean, just it's literally so one simple. foot in front of the other. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's just how I it. heard this brilliant quote, actually, uh, and, I've been, and it's been in my mind when I've been running for the last, and it's <laughs> such a simple quote. It's from Alice in Wonderland, and a friend of mine, another ultra runner, said it. And I think it's the king in Alice in Wonderland, and all he says is, all you've got to do is start and carry on and then stop when you finish. And that just sums up. It's as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> That's ultra running. Yeah? You just start and yeah. just keep going. And then when it finishes, you just stop. So, simple. I, I mean, there's so many questions like uh, with like, well, how to delve into that. But so kind of instantly saying like it's not, um, it's not as in brackets taxing on your body. Um, so definitely one of the things surely for, for, um, ultra running is the the mental side. Like yeah, the, I mean, it, you, phys- you, yeah, you do. I mean, you feel it on your body. It's not taxing on your aerobic system, yeah. you know. But 
one of the things you have to manage it is painful so when you get to 10 hours into a race your your body starts to it starts to hurt you know everything hurts and 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 i suppose not even managing but blocking out that pain is one of the skills that you you have to do when you're when you're racing but then i suppose you're right that is a mental that's a mental skill well yeah you're and you're saying you were getting into a uh, you you see it's a meditative state mm-hmm. some people even just uh, i mean you you're we've just spoken that you were saying that you you're into yoga so you understand that sort of that side of it that mindfulness side of it some people that's a really out there thing for them so sometimes even just the idea i speak to people about having just trying one minute of meditation that's like the most painful thing in the world for them Mm -hmm. because they just can't be with their alone with their thoughts for a while um so that sort of extended period is uh, yeah that's that's a really big tax that's a big resilience not only just on your body but on your your mentality as well Uh, yeah i think so but like i was saying before i think running it's it's almost like a it's like a meditation cheat i think you get you don't people talk about runners high though don't they yeah exactly but i think i think you need a certain i think you need to be in a certain environment for that to happen obviously you i think is if you're running around the city all the time and you know there's noises and there's you know there's traffic lights to think about and there's people to try and dodge and I, I don't think it's e- it's as easy to kind of get into that meditative state and if you've got headphones on and you're listening to something obviously it's not going to happen as well but if 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 anyone can find time to just get out into the countryside on like a you know when you're immersed in this green grass and on the backdrop of like a beautiful blue sky and yeah. I just something just happens to your to your mind and uh, and be, I don't know I think because running such a natural movement it's almost a bo- like the body really it just enjoys it you know what I mean and, yeah. it is, and it's almost like you can you can get to places in your mind without having when you sit down and meditate sometimes it's quite you're, you're almost struggling to like stop your mind when yeah. when it's the last thing you should be doing you know what I mean you should just be but I find that running can yeah there's there's not that your mind just gets to that position without you having to struggle it's, i guess um, that's really because the way i teach a lot of a, a lot of meditation is, is breath work so mm-hmm. it's it's that ability to take yourself out of your mind and into your body and your breath is the lowest hanging fruit for most people because mm-hmm. some people aren't going to go run 10 miles every day yeah, yeah um but that is essentially what you're talking about that's essentially you're saying your focus becomes on the external and and maybe the physical of your body, mm-hmm. but that takes you out of your that takes yeah. you out of your head. Yeah, and that definitely. Puts you in the body you, and in, into the environment you're in. Yeah, I mean, you sometimes you're yeah you focus you can focus in on your breath, can't you? And sometimes without knowing it, it's just the rhythmic sound of your feet kind of hitting the ground that, that can get you into a kind of meditative state or that that kind of runner's heart. It's uh, yeah. And and the distances you cut you cover like you you didn't just decide to walk out the door one day and and do well, apart from your marathon where you were just yeah. like, I'm going to go do that uh-huh. but like you've built up over a, a certain period of time I guess a resilience in your body because there, there's got to be an element where you do have to really be nailed on for your the physical side of this as well to last I mean what was the um the hung the hungry the chain? Hungary, yeah it was a six so it was nine nine hundred and twenty kilometers yeah in, in six, six days. days yeah. There's a yeah. yeah so I ha- think, how so do you go about that physically? To be fair, um, what to get into that state to be ready to run that? Yeah, or, to be well, physically like, capable of doing that that uh, mileage. Yeah, I just think it's lots and lots of miles in your so your legs are conditioned to um, to feeling tired and being uh, being able to run when they're tired as well. I mean, right? Yeah, my legs always feel tired, and I'm always running on tired legs, so. Yeah, maybe, maybe that helps. And it is just, like, I, I don't do, I know runners who do a lot more mileage than me, but I, I'm probably running about 140 miles a week or something. So it's, uh, and I'm just... Whereas it, others are running more? You you get some ultra runners who are doing 200 miles a week, yeah. Wow. Whereas others, I'm kind of, maybe I'm like in the middle, whereas others are, are doing they tend to do much less they, they prefer to maybe only doing 80 miles a week or something um but yeah f- the way i see it is just learning to be to run when you're tired yeah so being 
bad shape and uh, feel in bad shape and but then be running through that yeah it's more, shape more like achy more like muscle like tiredness yeah. you know just being able to keep going when you uh yeah when you feel like that yeah and you um uh, brad tells me a good story as well of uh when you were running the bright marathon eight times in a row mm-hmm. and you started on the friday yeah and then the marathon actually starts on the sunday and you just ran consistently one of the good the one of the interesting things of of that story was that you had like uh, an in-law that ran three with you yeah my brother ran uh oh, yeah, oh your he, brother yeah 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 yeah. ran yeah. three with you he ran four yeah he ran 100 miles yeah that, that he, like that in itself like so is there have you found like a power of community at all with with what you do as well with the ultra running community what's oh it kind man of? the ultra running community is like the best i've yeah, yeah. I, it's the well because when i saw because a lot of people will think of it like dan lawson is is off running miles on his own um but then when you actually delve into like the competitions yeah like i mean I'd, the I'd, events, I'd, there's loads of people yeah, there. yeah, like yeah. i train on my own i, I pretty much train yeah like 95 percent, maybe more 98 percent of the time on my own but it, the ultra running circuit is oh it's a beautiful place to be yeah i've never met I've never met an ultra runner who I who I dislike or they're all just I think they're running so much that they're all just so chilled out that they're I don't, I don't know they're just great uh, ultra runners and it's a nice circuit like I I'll race abroad and and I'll see the same people and the so yeah the same faces so we I've got the world championships the 24 hour world championships in like three or four weeks time I mm. think it is and for me like the most what i look forward to the most is seeing all the people again for that i haven't seen it's almost the race is almost secondary because it, it, like everything it's about finding your tribe of people isn't it mm. and and ultra running is going to have a, a limited amount of people it's so, getting bigger though like, really? ultra running yeah yeah i think well i mean i i don't i don't know many ultra runners uh, yeah. in, in, but i guess what what class is an ultra run it's like 50 miles isn't it well and, and it's, it's above, a, yeah it's i a, mean wide so, variety of what ultra, I mean, running ultra as well. running is what they say is it's any distance over a marathon so if you run if you go out and run 28 yeah. miles it's classed as an ultra, ultra but you know i'd i'd say that janus chorus is is like the freak of ultra runners he holds all the records he was around like 20 years ago and he he says something that ultra running doesn't start the first like real ultra race is a 24 hour race which i kind of a uh, i kind of agree yeah, on because 100 like 100k you can get done in seven and a half hours and 100k is more it's almost more like a a running race because yeah. you've got a pace in there i get, and I even get what you i get what you mean i, I kind of agree with that mm-hmm. i definitely agree with that i feel there's a part of me is like you've got to go that yeah, yeah because you have to i think once you get into running 24 hours plus that's when you're having to really it's almost it's so 100k you can almost get through physically you just on that being a good athlete but once you start running 24 hours you it really becomes like almost the mental side of it takes over from the physical side you've got a you've got i don't know it's more important that mentally you're able to get through that race and physically you so how how do you get through that uh Another story that my brother told me about was when you were doing the world record for the um, the oh, treadmill, on the treadmill, the treadmill yeah, for yeah. a week. Mm, uh, and terrible. That, yeah. <laughs> but he said, so you had you'd set that treadmill up, and you had two treadmills either side, uh-huh. and people could come and join you. And Brad ran a stint, and he said he was there with you, but you weren't there. Uh-huh. Like that was his way of describing. It. He was like there, at, but Dan Lawson had left the building. It, he w- you were in this state where. You were just running, and I think he came up to you after and said, "Like, uh, do you realise I was there?" And you, you said, "No." Yeah, you didn't know. I, I think actually that treadmill was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. It because it was it was really hard for me to find my kind of groove. I don't know what you call it because I was for one, I was on a treadmill, so it's an unnatural way to be yeah. to be running. You know, I I I, f- I feel that it's so much easier to run naturally when you're out in the countryside and you're and you're, there's no sounds and there's no so this was really unnatural and there was constantly people coming in and chatting to me that never it doesn't usually happen when i'm running i'm yeah. just on my own so it i found it really hard in that one to act to 
to get to a place where I could start to lose myself. You know, I, sometimes I call it like going to Narnia in my in my head, where you can just go off into and lose hours, you know. And I found that really hard. And actually, I found it so hard that on the last day we had we had three treadmills. They were yeah, I was in the middle, we had one either side, and we were facing, we were in this big gazebo at the back of the gazebo, and we were facing like a kind of public area where people would come and chat. And on the last day, um, with about 20 hours left, I got off a treadmill and I said, right, we've got to do this. And I made, I made everyone lift the treadmill up and turn it round. So I was facing... So I had my back to everyone. So the, t the other two treadmills were still facing the other <laughs> way, and I had my back to everyone. Because you just because I just needed to switch off. I needed to what switch off. What was the distance off. you had to try and get? Oh, it was like in the context now. If I did it, it's not. It was five hundred and twenty miles or something. So in the so you're saying in the context now of what you run, you uh, think you'd be okay compared yeah, to when you were there. Yes, like I think the, I'd. The uh, I think I find it much easier yeah but it was a real it was a real struggle it was so much a struggle that um actually we did manage to tell i did with 10 miles left or something <laughs> i we turned the treadmill back around <laughs> <laughs> but still i still with like one mile left I, just, I was so yeah i really didn't even know whether i'd make that one mile it was it was Isn't really that amazing like how you talk about kind of going out of your your body and into this different state when you're in nature and that, that's something that I've actually really personally I've started doing more of like running I've started doing more barefoot running mm -hmm. um, so that yeah I mean that's a great thing to connect you to oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so the the I think I lost that in in, my, in the world of sport because sport you can get so caught up in running on treadmills you mm -hmm. can get so caught up in the technology of, of things and you really forget how much we're just natural beings like you said we're yeah. born to run yeah. we're literally born and to run and it's such a natural movement isn't it and I think you're yeah and and so much of what we have is is unnatural. Yeah, I mean my commute into into Brighton and stuff is yeah. If but I go the roadway rather rather than the way on the like the long way across the downs and across the countryside is yeah. I mean it's so unnatural. You know, it's pavements, it's cars, it's people on their phones having to dodge them in the streets. Yeah. And and I think when yeah, if you can get to but isn't it weird? Like in society, you'll look like the weird one. <laughs> do you know what I mean and that's what I found when I'm running barefoot and I'm feeling amazing like yeah. I actually come from doing a barefoot run and I feel better for like doing it physically like mm -hmm. my, my um, I felt like my tendons were losing their elasticity from the from running so much in shoes and not being out in terrain that was challenging mm -hmm. challenging my stability my proprioception um, and then when you tell people like lose running barefoot like what a widow and it's yeah, like yeah, well yeah, yeah. i wasn't yeah. born in trainers yeah i wasn't yeah, exactly. born with all these all this different technology around me i was born to, to run like this like, mm -hmm. that's how we physically men do and um but it's those actually pe those people will, uh, will quite happily pay for someone to re do like a reflexology session on their on their foot and pay because when i run barefoot that's what i love that kind of feel you just feel like your feet have been massaged yeah. for, and it's just oh they're like they're almost, almost like they're sparkling and they're zinging. They get warm. For, yeah, they get yeah. warm, and some people think like, "Are your feet going to get cold?" And mm -hmm. you're not. No, they're. When you think about it, the muscles in your feet are having to work harder. They're sending more blood flow to them, and they actually warm up. And it took. I, I listened to a podcast with a, a group of guys called the the Foot Collective out in Canada. They're a bunch of. Uh, they're a group of. They're a couple of um, physical therapists that mm -hmm. that work around feet, and they were. They, they they said in a podcast that I listened to about how your feet get warm. I was like, no, nah, it can't be. My feet are freezing all the time. But just took my shoes off and that made them feel amazing. Then it sort of, and it wasn't a case of I went and ran 10K straight away with no shoes because I realized I'd conditioned my feet to running shoes and yeah, yeah, yeah. orthotics and all sorts. And I needed to decondition them or, or, um, or sort of like mix that conditioning up and kind of make an all round foot, I guess, that was ability. And there's also the nut, you can't get away from playing specialist sports um, with certain shoes. So like I couldn't get away with not playing cricket in, in cricket <laughs> boots or playing football bowling. in football boots. Like you couldn't see footballers running around barefoot, yeah, could yeah, you, apart yeah. from but then you not do in the Premier in, League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you do at, the, at uh, a certain level, yeah. but not in the Premier League. Like there's an element where you've got to be, um, you've got to be 
towards that sport you've got to put your your foot in whatever footwear that sport requires but other than that i'm a big advocate for get out your shoes get out into yeah. nature like really connect and, and that's more the going back to what you're saying it's the it's the mind side of it like that connecting with nature is so important mm-hmm. because of you've you i've never done i've never done a work i've never had a workout in nature that's not been as good as a workout in a gym Mm. oh uh, yeah yeah l- do you know what I mean and it, it's like a I, I know I was saying earlier it's not it feels like a cheat uh, sometimes because you can you it things just happen naturally to your body to your mind when you when you go out into nature and especially yeah, if you if you go and run barefoot and it, it's just there's actually a friend of mine um uh, he's uh he's a yoga teacher in India we spent sometimes spend our winters in India and uh, there was a chap, a movement specialist, his name's Shane Benzie, he's quite an interesting chap, he works on um, fascia and elasticity in your in runners, yeah. basically. And he was he, he was in India and he was doing some filming, like some slow motion filming of, of my running style. And Pem, this friend of mine, who's, who's uh, he's, he's from India, he's born in Northeast India, and he runs a little bit as well. And he, he filmed Pem, and he filmed Pem with a pair of trainers on, and his running style was like it was like it was awful. Yeah? He was landing on his heel. He was uh, everything was wrong. His body was a bit like it wasn't aligned properly. And then Pem took his shoes off and and he filmed him again with his shoes off. And everything was just perfect. And all he did was take his shoes off. And he's and oh, he's uh, and he he changed. Uh, I mean he he. he I don't know what what the answer to that is. Whether he le- he must have learned he he lived in bare feet when he was younger, so maybe he he learned the right way to run. And as soon as he put trainers on, that made him run in a in a different yeah a different way. Yeah. yeah. But it was it was it was literally in a matter of five seconds how he how he changed well, just from taking his shoes off. There's been a lot of research around commercial trainers having sort of put band aids on band aids. Like they created trainers to look good and 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 sort of once the running boom happened in the 50s and and they started to then build them then brands started to make them look good and wanted mm-hmm. fashionable and then it went far away from purpose and then it's saying like oh there's a heel arch here that's going to improve your stability but actually it potentially could be taking you away from what you want to need to be doing which is getting in barefoot that's an amazing story like yeah, that's yeah. that and how quick that happened as well literally yeah. take your shoes off and you run run better i definitely have felt that as well that i've not heel struck oh yeah as yeah. much because you one you you're actually potentially looking out for sharp objects mm-hmm. your your feet are having that reaction to the floor and you're, you're picking them up rather than smashing them on the floor mm-hmm. because you're not worried about anything on the floor when you've got shoes on um, yeah that how much of your how much of your running actually do you look at sort of your own biomechanics? Oh, I don't. I d- yeah, don't. I don't. Yeah, you've just that, what <laughs> you've got. Quite, is what uh, you've got. We were having like a sports science. We were chatting, weren't we, a little bit before we we started here yeah. about sports science. But I, um, yeah, I'm of the thinking that running it's just such a natural thing anyway that I'm, I just I just do what I you know it's so simple why I complicate it so yeah. I haven't and in fact when Shane came to do that testing on me, I was a little bit sceptical at first because I was like, I don't really want... He put, like, sensors on my calves. He put them... They were all over my legs, you know, reading. I don't know what they were reading. And I was a little bit sceptical because I I just... Sometimes I think science... Like, it just ruins that natural... That beauty of running that's so simple. But actually, it kind of worked out because he... um, he did the sensors on me he told me oh look you can change this you can change that and it actually made me a bit more present in my running because i was i was thinking more about my i was in the present moment a lot more because afterwards he went he was saying i'll try and just move that foot a little bit so it just made me think about my body as as i was running a bit more and i kind of i kind of like that and it was it's hard to explain maybe it's not hard to explain this but it, I kind of had a, like an epiphany that it's not, you don't even have to physically. So if he says this, my right leg is not coming up quicker than my left leg, I don't have to physically move my right leg up. I just need to sp- put my awareness onto my right leg and yeah. then it seems to change. So I don't have to think about 
like I need to be doing this position. I just have to be aware of my right leg. And then it seems to start changing on its own. Yeah. Makes total sense of that being present as well. Cause you're, you're going back again out your mind into your body mm -hmm. and you're, you're, you're doing it. Like you're, that's, you're just being present. And that's, yeah. um, that's incredible sort of how, uh, well, one, how you were skeptical of it to begin with. And then, and then yeah, I was, yeah, it was, but it came, yeah, I did quite, uh, I did quite like it. Well, what I didn't want to do is like have constant feedback of yeah of like of the numbers and stuff like that. Like I, I mean, I can't even tell you what in the end what numbers he was telling me. Like, but it, it, I just like the way it made me a little bit more present. And it kind of does make sense with what you were saying about you can you can be as fit as you want, but at one point in ultra marathon running, you gonna have to or ultra running you're gonna have to be mentally resilient so it's, it's almost irrelevant mm -hmm. it's sometimes that could be a bit of the irrelevant part is how much you can deal with the the, the pain and the struggle that uh, that will come with it at some point and and then consist okay how would, would you say consistency is like a, a word within what you do because uh, i feel like you'd have to you'd have to be genuinely consistent throughout the, yeah, the six days think, you were in, in I think it, in ultra running when you look at like good results and especially in the longer uh, yeah, I think consistency a consistent pace is yeah, really okay. important um, and does that come from anything around what you do as well like so I was I was a big believer in sport that if you're consistent if you're consistent outside of the sport like if you do the same things or similar things that are um, that are improving you um, rather than having these huge ups and downs then your performances will be quite consistent. Is that something that you kind of go along with or um, is, or do you have a different take on it? Yeah, possibly, I think, possibly. I think someone someone spoke to, I was listening to someone the other day that said that good ultra runners are basically devoid of any of a, any emotion, <laughs> 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 which I can kind of, not. I mean, not in a bad way, but just like not, they don't, mentally, they don't kind of have that up. They're pretty much like, flatlining emotionally rather than like highs and lows and highs and lows and i think i think that makes sense yeah that you you mentally you're kind of consistent yeah mm. you don't i mean the worst thing you can do when you're ultra running is get in a race is get too excited and feel good and go off really right. fast you know because at some point you're you kind of drop right off and you just you just implode so trying to keep a consistent steady pace for the whole of the 24 hours or the six days is usually usually the, the winner is the person that can do that the best yeah rather than going fast and then like really hanging on at the end well, you, i saw that loads at the london marathon you mm -hmm. but someone said to me i think it was my girlfriend read it she she said that um she said that she read someone said like the marathon's like the tide so it's like you gotta let the tide go out mm -hmm. and that means that there'll be people that will run off and then the tide will come back and then maybe there'll be another group that will run off and that's the group that you don't ever see again because they're the ones that are, are, are pretty good runners but then there's another group that like does tail off again mm -hmm. and and you've got to try to start the race you've got to pull back and and that's what i did i remember i remember getting i got really excited about the london marathon there were people everywhere i described the london marathon when i did it was there was a party going on in London. There just happened to be a marathon at the same time. <laughs> and that was what, the, and you're just literally on your high five in, you feel like a celebrity, everyone's screaming your name. Like, and you, there was no way you couldn't let that adrenaline not get to your feet and your feet start yeah, going yeah, a little yeah. bit quicker. And, but that I, I remember just getting to one point going, slow down, like slow down. You're going to kill yourself here. Like this is, this is going to be a s real struggle. It was a struggle in the end. Like mm -hmm. I had under trained for sure. Like I, I, I definitely, we spoke about my my training pre marathon. I'd never run anything more than ten k, and I I'm sort of what six foot three and about eighty seven kilos, and I was definitely not ready to do that. Um, and uh, no, th but the mentality side of it was that was a real real eye opener, real yeah. real eye opener. But um, it's so much better to st in any race, in any running race, to start off slowly and then be strong at the end. When yeah. just from a mental point of view, because when you're overtaking people at the end, at the end of the last ten miles of a marathon or the last five miles of a marathon, you start to feel so so good. But if you're the person that everybody's overtaking, it's just 
it's just so hard. To, it's just so mentally, it's so hard. So it's yeah, it's much much better to try and um, you be that one that's going you ran, faster. Yeah, you ran the Gobi Desert, right? Mm -hmm. the, and that's four hundred kilometers, and you did it. You got the course record for that in like seventy hours. Yeah. So that is one. That's a massive race, but you just come from from yoga, which is in forty degrees, and obviously in light you you like the hot there and and that was a that's a hot um yoga class but how is it is it a lot different when you're in the heat like for that intent does it, i'm just imagining everything running in the heat just it with that gobi desert what's that compared to everything else that you've done well in terms of heat or in terms of uh i mean there's I've got a million questions well, here, one so. thing so the heat i love the heat yeah so i'm 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 like the opposite of most other runners that I meet who, as soon as the sun comes out, they're, yeah, it, it just ruins them. Yeah, but I'm the other way around. If, give me like a cold, wet day and I'm... Oh, You're I, solar powered, basically. I hate it. Yeah, I really hate it. But in the, I just love the, I love the sunshine. Yeah, and so I've never... I even in um, I ran a race called Badwater, so it goes across Death Valley in uh, right. in America. So it's a 135 mile race, but it's like the hottest place on earth, isn't it? Death mm. Valley. So I think we started the race at 11 o'clock at night, and I think it was 45 degrees oh, at wow. 11 o'clock at night. But that I didn't really notice. You know, I mean, it gets up towards 50, but I didn't really notice the heat there. I just I just like sunshine so yeah. i'm i'm all right in the heat i'm fine yeah and how do you so let's stay at the, at the gobi how do you tactically run that race because there's so that you're being tracked weren't you and didn't mm. and that race um did you arrive at the finish line early or before they uh, even, they'd even like set it up or something like that no the, the finish i definitely set up i think the story was if the 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 ceo of the company or something he he uh, he his plane was i don't know he wasn't there he because he didn't think anyone would finish uh, he arrived like 12 hours later or something because that's when they thought people would finish yeah. <laughs> but um it's uh, yeah i don't know tactically it's just i think it's so simple in in like there's two different races i run so some are like that it's 400 kilometers and you, the, yeah, you've just got to run 400 kilometers and you get to the finish. And mm. tactically, tactically, those races are easy because you just the faster you run, the quicker you get to the finish. So it's really simple, you know. And if your if your legs start to hurt and and even if mentally you start to struggle a little bit, well, if you run a bit faster, then you'll be able to finish a bit a bit quicker. So it, that kind of works. It's the yeah. it's the timed races where it's like see how far you can go in 24 hours or six days where it's much harder because the faster you run in those races the longer you're yeah making your race and and from a like a mental point of view that's quite hard because your body's always trying to save energy isn't it you know i think that's that's quite a struggle you have with your mind that your mind's always trying to save save yourself just in i don't know just in case so it's quite easy for the mind to compute well if i go as fast as i can i'll be finished quicker and then i can rest but when you're on those timed ones, yeah, when you're trying to go faster, but your mind's thinking, well, you're going faster just means we're going to end up running longer. So we're yeah. going to expend in more. They're harder tactically. Right. And and what about nutrition? So how do you, like, I'm just thinking how you're eating through that, how you're eating, how you're sleeping. Um, so, yeah, that's another, uh, uh, yeah, nutrition is my weakest, my weakest point. Really? really. Yeah, yeah. Just don't eat. Well, yeah, I don't eat, and when I train, I make a mistake of not. I'm quite happy not eating when I'm training. You know, like a four or five hour run, I can I can run without eating or, or even drinking sometimes. But because I don't really like carrying, I quite like just going off and running and mm. not really not having to think too much about it. And oh, I've got to take this, and I need to carry this. So yeah, so I've got myself into a position where I can quite happily run for yeah four or five hours without um eating or drinking but then when i come to a race and obviously i'm moving a little bit quicker and and also i'm out a bit longer um i need to eat and drink but um i haven't trained eating and drinking so it gets harder to yeah because you have so, to train that part of it don't you you have yeah, to learn how to eat and run and yeah and so do that. 
I've tried lots of different things and what seems to work for me at the moment is just like high uh, carb content, like energy drinks. So I'll just, I'll concentrate. I'll probably, well, I don't eat that much solid stuff. I'll, I'll tend to just try and concentrate on uh, energy drinks. Yeah, unless it's a bit of a longer race. So maybe in the Gobi, I had time. Oh, I can't remember what I ate in the Gobi. Um, or maybe I had one of those rehydrated meal things and uh and then the six day race in hungary yeah i think i was quite, uh, most of it was on this this energy drink is um yeah and it, the because the hungary was a nine 900 meter loop just the mm -hmm. same loop for six days um and you so as well as nutrition there's sleep you have to consider as well and you said you kind of started tripping on um in the Gobi, sleep, sleep deprivation. Yeah, as well. in the Gobi, I was tripping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine well, that. There's a lot of stories kind of I could tell you. Yeah, in the in the Gobi, yeah, I had really bad sleep deprivation. Um, Has there ever been a moment where you've kind of thought, Dan, we're in trouble? Yeah, in the Go in the Gobi, I was I was getting a little bit scared. Yeah, and I mean, I actually uh, during the last, it must be in the last. 30 kilometers or something I'd, I'd got to the last kind of life base point and it was 30 kilometers to the finish and i remember um i remember like i was floating out of my my body i was what i was as i was running i was above my body i was literally looking down on myself as i was it was a good state to be in though because uh, like all of a sudden like my legs they weren't hurting they weren't because i just wasn't physically i wasn't in moving. my body yeah i was moving i was just watching myself um run yeah and kind of uh it was quite nice but then i had some i had moments where i didn't know that like, i didn't know i always knew who i was didn't know where i was didn't know what i was doing didn't know my mind was really uh yeah i actually rang my um wife when i was getting into the kind of town maybe i was 20 kilometers away from the finish and i rang my wife and i, I was like i don't I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I know I've got, I know I'm running, but I don't know why I'm running. I don't know why. You're orienteering this race as well. It, it was like a GPS. It was like a handheld right. GPS. And all you have to do is there's a, there's a, a black arrow and you have to keep that black arrow on the black line on the Just screen. Just that, that so direction. I, I was, I was happy, you know, I, I was doing that, but whilst I was doing that, I was thinking, what, why am I doing that? Where am I? What is this? What am I doing? Where? <laughs> yeah so Is when it, how, so in that race 70 hours like how did you sleep what, like where do you sleep and in that race I, t I stopped early on on the first night and lay down for like half it, an hour 40 minutes no so every, every right. like 50k or something there's something they, they're like a life base so there's like a big like military tent and um they take your you give them bags so they'll take to these places so in those bags there's there's drinks that i can refill on and there's yeah. um so i lay down there for yeah like 40 minutes or so and then yeah. you run that's that's sleep 40 minutes yeah and then yeah for seven. but I, I was i was trying i was almost there was some points on the last day when i was managing to get like a minute or so sleep whilst i was running i was trying to i was trying to sleep while i was running wow well. oh my god <laughs> That is just um, shutting my eyes for a bit, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's insane. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's like so many things, like because uh, there are so many stories that I've I've kind of heard of them, and then you kind of think, oh, are they real? Like, but now they are actually real. <laughs> uh, like there was a story of you running a race, and you were you were running around a field for for ages, and you you got lost, and then you managed to rejoin the race oh, after yeah, like two I'm hours often, and still I, win yeah. it. I often get lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I've got better at that, actually. Uh, I think maybe three or four years ago, every race I ran, I, I got lost at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I have, there was one time, yeah, I was so bad. To, uh, this was in Cornwall, actually. And yeah, I was, I was ahead. I took the wrong turn. I went 10 kilometers, like the wrong way, and then realized I'd gone the wrong way. So, got back to the race and then yeah, I was obviously in last position and then managed to get to the front of the race again and, and it was dark and it was there was this storm and we were going across Bodmin Moor and 
they'd put on on the signs they'd put like little um reflective stickers so we've got head torches on so when you're looking with the head torch it shines on the reflecting sticker so then you know all right that's a sign so i aim for that sign and that will point me in that direction or straight on and i spent like an hour aiming towards these signs and every time i got to this reflective uh round sticker it was a bloody cow's eye that oh. was just <laughs> So I spent like an hour like running to different cows in a field. <laughs> Gone the one you, no way. Yeah. So, but I'm yeah. I seem to have not got lost for a few races, which is, uh, mate. I think I'm just selecting well signpost races, or it's quite hard to get lost on a 900 meter it's like track going one as well. Way. Yeah. It's only going one way. Um, how much is your like? Do you think a lot of what you've done now is experience? Like you were saying about the treadmill, for example, you you kind of mentioned that looking back, then you could probably manage that better now. Is that meaning? Do you reckon that means because ultra running is just an experience thing? You got to experience it to yeah, like anything I really. I guess, yeah, I but think you're right. Yeah, you just get um, yeah, you get better, don't you? Yeah, you just you just get better at. I suppose there's but do you few think things, like the mental side has yeah, become better? I, yeah, definitely. To deal with, so to deal you, with, like you know signs that are coming, and you know the how to manage certain points. For example, I know I will run a, a my second marathon better because there'll be moments in that race that I will have registered in my yeah. mind that are warning signs or or how to prep for it better or whatever. So mm -hmm. is it the same? Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing is you just realise that in every race, in every race you run, you're gonna there's going to be moments when you're like real down moments when, when mentally you, you, you get into quite dark places. Mm. But what you realise is that the more races you run, that, that, that's, just, that's just part of the flow of running long distances and you do get into those dark places. But, you know, if you kind of enjoy and embrace those dark places, then, then not long... It doesn't take long for you to kind of come back up, you know, because you've. Oh, that's amazing. It's, that's, it's an amazing almost, it's, that's like life as well, isn't it? It that's is, yeah. I mean, you know that that's that's the rhythm of the of the race. So when the dark times come, it just means that you're closer to a like a good time. Do you know what I mean? So and yeah. yeah, if you if you try and fight it and you and you kind of go against it and kind of paddle upstream, it it becomes harder and it, 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 the place becomes darker and it lasts for longer. But if you kind of just say, well, yeah, this is this is part of it. This is part of the flow. Then, then the flow carries on. If that if that makes and sense. Yeah, eventually and eventually you come back into a, a better place. Yeah, because that's what it, it always happens, doesn't it? And you're right, and it's the same in it's the same in life. You know, you have your moments when you're you know you don't feel as good in life, but it, everything is just yeah. That's a really great way of thinking about it. I think because a lot of people get stuck on when they feel bad. I mean, I went through my own bout of depression after losing my career and, and I think I fought it for ages. Whereas now I accept part the days mm -hmm. I'm having badly. Like yeah. the, that's just a part of life. Yeah. And the, it, it is literally like swimming upstream. Like the more you fight it, the, the harder that current's going to hit you. And um if you kind of just go with it literally go with the flow like mm, you, you so realize yeah, it is so going to I use that saying a lot to me actually i remember i, I have an image of um these kids well i was in the pool once and i have an image of these kids of that's real like of of like they were they were messing around on this river and they were uh, in like blow up tractor tires like inner tubes of tractors tires and they were just they were having so much fun with it, like legs up in the air, like kick back in these tractor tires, just letting this river take them wherever. And it, I remember that image all the time because it is like that. You've got a, just it's such hard work swimming upstream and going against against something, but it's so it's so much it's so much easier just kicking back and lying back and just letting the river take you. You just got to trust. You've got to trust trust the rivers going yeah. to the going to the right place and once you do that everything's just much easier you know? yeah mate that's amazing um i wanted to ask you what so with all this this intent is intense what you do um so what drives you to do it like what what's the and, and there's a big uh, question it's like why do you do it yeah i but then i I'd, I'd say it wasn't intense at all yeah uh, for yeah, me okay. it's and that's what drives me to do it because it's it's kind of it's like the opposite of intense. It's calm. It's 
it's kind of stillness that's that's totally what running brings me i find it, it, i don't know other activities and uh not like not that i don't cope in real life but i just yeah, find, yeah. i find that more and you've got more fam- you've got family which must be incredibly supportive of, of what oh yeah my family are brilliant and my wife's uh, because yeah. it's not I, I i've met some endurance athletes and and that can be a big strain on people if, yeah if, if the other half don't get it or like the uh, the family can't understand it and the embracing of of that kind of culture i guess and that that sort of like ecosystem that you're putting yourself in is um mm-hmm. is really important isn't it yeah uh, they're great and i think I, I don't think I'd be doing a disservice to most ultra runners to tell us, like, like essentially, it, I don't know. Like, when I first started running, people would always say to me, oh, like, the classic line is, what are you running away from? And I'd always be like, no, I'm not running away from anything. But then I think when it comes down to it, I think we probably are most, ultra, we are running away, you know what I mean, from finding just that, time on our own and that that stillness and and you know we we, i think we are we are essentially running away from from real real life aren't we or or from real life as it is now as that kind of society and yeah it's our chance to just not be part of it for a little bit yeah Uh, and um we didn't really touch on it but you ended up representing team gb Mm -hmm. um and you and that the world championships coming up is that with that's with that's Team GB Team as well. GB. Yeah. How many of you guys are in that? Uh, so that we take uh, a team of six, six men, six women. Yeah. Wow. And it's a 24-hour format. So again, it's round pretty, I think it's like a one, around a one-kilometer loop always uh, for 24 hours. And yeah, you we run individually, but then more importantly with, with GB, we go to try and win team medals, and, right, and, yeah. and the first three runners count towards uh, like a, you add up the distances of the first three, and that counts towards team medals. And we've got a pretty decent team actually. We most of the uh, the last championships we've been to, we've we've finished like we've we've won gold, we've won silver. So we've we've got a really decent team. We we're we're up there with the the best kind of ultra running teams in the world. Who's the other, who's kind of like big competition? Uh for us the French are always good. Yeah. Um the Japanese uh have uh, have some very good runners. Um and the Americans this year in the world championships will, will be pretty good. So probably are they're our main rivals. There's a few other teams that have like good runners but maybe one or two just good runners and that's not good enough because you need to have a that's interesting that there's not african nations i think a lot of people would have assumed that african nations would be yeah yeah big names yeah why why is that i don't know i think a number of reasons i think there's not there's not as much money well there's no money in ultra in ultra running and i think that's uh um it's a motivation for especially if because these the Africans, the Kenyans, the Ethiopians are very, very good runners and they can earn they can earn the good money as running in speed runners for yeah, the distances. They yeah. can earn good money uh, running marathons. And I think if they were to run ultras it would end up costing them, you know, that the motivation for these African runners is to is to provide for their families and and it's the other way it's the other way around in this country. If you're an ultra runner you end up spending more money you know, then right. on races. And, and you run on s- sponsorship? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I'm not sponsored. I used to be sponsored. And um, I, uh, about two years ago, I gave up all my sponsorship. Right, because okay. I was, that, I, I felt. That's when I first yeah. heard of you and it was sponsorship. And yeah, and I felt a bit uneasy about <laughs> touting things that I didn't, you know, I didn't necessarily fully believe in. I just, I just felt, you know, this is, this, I don't know. It just felt wrong to me. So yeah. I, we, I stopped being sponsored, and we set up our own kind of um, second-hand running clothes um, social enterprise. Where that's perfectly we, segued into yeah, talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where so I chose. I thought if I'm going to promote anything, I want to promote something I really believe in. So, um, so that's what I run solely in secondhand clothes, secondhand running shoes now, just just to prove that you know you don't need to have all this really expensive um, kit that uh, the running companies will tell you you need to change, you need to upgrade every year, just to say that it's running 
running so simple and you don't you don't need to complicate it with uh with fancy kit and stuff you can still be as good running in other people's clothes and mm. other people's trainers or making your last your trainers last for three or four years rather than three or four months that we're told um they're supposed to last for is it and yeah so this is rerun that we're talking this about is rerun. This, is, this is called yeah. rerun yeah. um so th- and you think that's that whole so you think it's a myth like the whole your trainers are only six months and you've got to get out of them and then you've got to get a new pair that yeah, feels think, like a commercial yeah, I think sale, doesn't it? I like think it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm, well, I think it's a myth, yeah. I'm living proof that it's a myth. I don't yeah. I don't buy new trainers. I wear second-hand trainers. The the trainers I've got on now, it's hard to explain, but they're yeah. like a they're like a Frankenstein they mash-up, Frank- yeah. mash-up of two or three pairs of old trainers to cover up holes in them and they're, they're like, I love them, these trainers. Yeah. yeah they've, they've been around for ages. Yeah, I just think it, it annoys me how simple and natural running is. And, and then we're kind of, I don't know, we're, it's the wrong way to say it, but it's almost dirtied a little bit by these big sports companies that, are, that push on to running that kind of fast fashion. And mm. you've got to look good and you've got to, you know, here's the, here's the summer's running I don't know ad- like clothes coming out and then they, they bring out the winter's ones and people are people are changing them like you know yeah it's running's better than that <laughs> you know it's not about just looking good and and parading like running around town and having people look at you and I don't know it's just yeah no I, I think it's I think it's true because I, I think them definitely having stepped away from professional sport um sometimes there's there's parts of it that are like non-negotiable like there's a new sponsor for a team that comes mm-hmm. in so you've got to change everything up but um but generally around the world of sport and exercise there there are these these sort of lines that are being fed to us about we have to change our shoes for example for yeah, yeah. every six months and and i think the more people question like why like why do i have to and can i do i have to Mm-hmm. and then there's people like you that are pr- proving that you don't have to yeah um you and don't have to go the that that that, r- that conservative way that you don't have to go conform to the way that everyone else is you yeah. can do something differently yeah and that and can actually be the right way of doing it and our thing as well with with these companies is they all right so if you're gonna say that if you're gonna say these shoes only last three months then then you have a responsibility to so a pair of trainers will take 1,000 years to decompose properly, you know, into the ground. And, and, and when it does decompose, it, it's full of contaminated plastics and poisons anyway, but we're not talking about that now. But it will take it will take yeah. 1,000 years to decompose. And then they're telling you that, they, that trainers only last for three months. So they have to have a responsibility. If you're making a product that takes 1,000 years to decompose, but you're saying it's lifetime, it's... it's 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 usage lifetime is only three months and this is there's something wrong there because yeah. you need to so if you're gonna say something like that then make a pair of trainers that you can then take back and you can recycle and then use as another pair of trainers so it's more of a closed loop it's not just a linear buy this wear it throw it away buy something else wear it throw it away so you're actually I mean, just not, there's so much stuff that we end up buying and then chucking away and it's just, it's hideous. So how does, how does actually rerun work and like, can people get involved in it and, and sort of how do you, yeah, how does it function? So rerun, I mean, we have a, we have an online uh, shop that sells secondhand running gear, but we're really not about uh, selling stuff. It's not, we just use that shop to provide us with um small profits and also um like we use the shop as an awareness thing so people talk about rerun and and what we when people ask how can they get involved the best way to get involved we say is just have a think about your consumption of uh, as we talk to runners so as your consumption of sportswear basically because like when you when you go to buy a new t-shirt just ask yourself simple things like, do I really need this? And if you don't need it, then don't buy it. Like, will I will I wear it regularly? 
for uh, you know a few times a week over the next three years yeah. if the answer is no then 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 don't buy it you know just i think if we all stopped before buying and things but we talk because i mean we talk about clothing if we all stopped and just asked ourselves out do i really need it it would just make a difference in terms of our consumption we we consume far too much uh, you know and it's not our fault because we're we're bombarded by like marketing mm -hmm. uh, ploys and advertising to tell us that we need to consume. It's important to consume, but consumption is just, you know, it's killing, it's killing the planet. And yeah. eventually it's, it's, it's killing us as a, as a human race is that, yeah, it, 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 everything we're talking about climate change a little bit before. Yeah, Cause you the went to the, you went to the strike that was in Brighton. Where was it? global thing yeah. but, um you were the bright one and that was really heavily attended mm -hmm. um and so it's, it's this is very aligned with what you do yeah and it is but it's, it's clearly a passion it, yeah and there's a simple way to to revert the climate crisis to stop is for all of us to stop consuming and stop mm. buying shit sorry to yeah. Uh, uh, yeah but it's, it's uh, <laughs> I, I think it, 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 it because it the it, yeah it's just that that capitalist society that relies on growth and uh and everything that drives growth is like fossil fuels and it, and it, to make anything you need to use fossil fuels i mean so that whole manufacturing yeah. and consumption is just driving us we're spiraling us out of control a little bit so i, I think so i've i've definitely moved uh, to that um a more way of living where i'm it's the eating organic like um checking that the the products i'm making how environmentally friendly are they? Um, and it, and sometimes I think some people think, well, well what's, what difference am I going to make? And also, how much have I got to change? Like, where does it end? Do I have to be like, a friend of mine, um, she went completely chemical free, like in her in her life. Mm -hmm. She's like, I'm not taking any, like I'm not, I've realized how many chemicals that are in everything that I'm interacting with. I'm going to mm -hmm. cut it out. That is and, really hard. And that was She'd almost oh, have God. to just And she was like, in a, yeah. she went insane. She yeah, was just yeah. like, I couldn't do it. I just you can't get away I, from I that. I can't yeah. run from it. There was nothing yeah. I could run from. I was miserable. Um, I felt awful, and it was dreadful. And then there was something that I saw recently, which I thought was brilliant. It was a quote. I don't know who it was by, but it was all about in order for the world to be better, it doesn't need a small amount of people doing things perfectly. It needs a lot of people doing them imperfectly. Mm. And I thought that was brilliant because then yeah. it 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 was a uh, so for me I'm when I'm going shopping, food shopping, I realize like eating purely organic sometimes from like a price point for people can be really tough. So it's like, can you make a 30% difference? Yeah. 10% yeah. difference, whatever mm -hmm. it is, you don't have to go a hundred percent all, all out, but that 30% is 30% that you weren't doing before. Yeah. And I think that's the same with clothing like that. It just takes that moment just before you're about to push the button, tap the card, or pick it up off the shelf mm -hmm. and go and just question like that three, like f give yourself five seconds and just go, do I need it? Yeah. Like it, if it's not sort of food or water, like do I need it? Um, and I think that's a, that's a really, that's a powerful part to do. That's the, that's the first step mm -hmm. Like we spoke mm -hmm. about even well, things like yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that first step of going into, like uh, if you want to try something new, like that going to a yoga class can seem too much for people so can you do like 10 minutes a day like build it up and mm -hmm. and then it changes and, the, and it kind of snow the, the the negative effect can snowball but i think the positive effect can snowball as well oh yeah, yeah because you you start to have an impact on not only your own life but sometimes people around you yeah um and it's the way to do it because sometimes we sometimes we get caught up trying to make really uh, you say really big changes so these marches are brilliant but in the marches, that we're asking for massive, we're asking for governments, for <coughs> huge companies to make changes, and that's a, we're asking for big, big mm. changes. But you're right, the biggest impact is is just doing your bit locally, and if ev if everyone does that in their own little communities, I mean that that's when it starts to build that big change. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, um, mate, that this has been amazing. Like, I've loved chatting off feel like I've gone for forever people can find you on Instagram um at the running down they can yeah I don't post my actually I being honest here I don't go on social media at all so my my partner posts yep. on uh 
we're usually but around But you can races. see what you're up to on yeah, there. Yeah, around races When you're racing, stuff like that, yeah. I definitely followed you around the, the Hungry Race. Yeah, so yeah. I, there's activity. Uh, and then your website is the running down dot, uh, uh, live. Dot live, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, mate, thank you so much for this. This has been amazing. Oh, and no. good, luck, good luck with the World Championships. Oh, thank you, for, man. For yeah, sure. Yeah. And yeah. I'll be watching and I hope a lot of people do as well. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Cheers, man. Thank you. Yeah.